Today I just thought we'd do a quick video on spot welding and the reason for this video comes from the last battery repair video that I made as I was spot welding the nickel strips on the battery. There were some comments about the way I was spot welding on the battery. Instead of going across the slot or the slit, I was putting mine close together and spot welding on the battery. So I just wanted to take a little time here to test because I do understand going across the slot. I've been working on batteries for quite some time and I'm going to put out some aluminum strip here and this will probably be a good video to show why not to use aluminum with nickel when spot welded. And we got a piece of stainless here which some of you might be surprised how well the stainless does with the nickel of course um, compared to the aluminum and even the sheet of brass that I just happen to have. And this brass is not going to do well either but I would say it may do better than the aluminum but we're going to find out. So I was just going to do some stainless for this test but I had these other two and I thought why not throw them up here because one technique might just happen to show that it sticks better or maybe not. But what I've done is I've taken these strips and I've just cut some pieces out. These are the same strips. Some I'm going to leave solid because I spot weld the solid strips quite often and some I'm going to put a slot in to go across. The current across there should be a different path, at least on a molecular level. It should be a little bit more flow through the source material than the strip. I'm going to plug up my spot welder. This is the same spot welder board I use in a lot of my videos. We're just going to set it for the battery type. We're going to go up to the full level. We're going to leave it on this full setting for the duration of the whole test here. This is a great spot welder for the money. I'll have a link in the description if you're interested in it. I'm going to bring over a regular strip like I use a lot and all these surfaces have been pre-cleaned. Everything's just ready to weld. Try to get it where you can see it better here. So starting with the solid strip in the corner, full power. It hit hard but I don't know how it's going to stick to this brass. Of course I'm trying to put nickel strips on the brass so it's going to take a lot more current to even make it stick at all but the purpose of this test is simply to see if one will stick better than the other for testing purposes. This current of course instead of through the whole strip is kind of forcing more current supposedly to go through the bottom material and it did actually stick a little. We'll pull it in a few minutes and see which one did better. Well you know what let's keep it um yeah let's keep it going the same direction with all tests. Do the solid strip to the left and then the split one out to the right. That way later when we zoom in we'll remember which one was which. The solid one was always on the left. Let's try to keep it that same pattern here. Other than that it doesn't matter. So the stainless man it just hits hard and you know it. It just made a great penetration on that. Now the one with the slotted going through so the current should mainly go through it's going to still take the path of least resistance, obviously. So in my opinion, it's still a lot going through the strip. But I think the big thought here is that the current is going through the source material and back up from positive to negative on your spot welder when you give it a gap in between. So both of those felt great. And I imagine those are going to stick awesome. We'll come back to it. Now this one, this one's going to be tricky. They might not even stick at all. Just as a comparison here, I didn't buy any aluminum strips for this test either and I probably don't have enough current to make it stick anyway. So all this is the exact same strips and yeah I'm not recommending ever putting nickel on aluminum of course this is just simply for this spot well strength test and yeah it didn't even try to adhere at all. You're talking about a lot of resistance difference in these materials but here's why I wanted to test this. So if this going across a split or a slot helps well let's let's even see if it helps from this aluminum even if it doesn't stick properly because it's not going to does it make a better spot or weld through and you can tell the spot weld is hitting hard but yeah just pretty much all your current is going through your path of least resistance so the only thing I can try is um I've cleaned it but let's scratch it up and clean it again we'll fast forward through a lot of this but I'm just gonna hit the surface here and spray it off with some more alcohol Alcohol is all I use to start with to clean the surface, but we're going to give it one more shot here. Again, back in the left corner with the solid strip. 
two solid wells, but yeah, it's not, it just popped right up. No real marks at all. It's a few little specks there, but, but not much to it really. Same here with the ones with the split. All right, it did stick a tad, so even though it wasn't successful, it did show to me that going across that spot did actually help. So I'll, I'll give that a thumbs up. And I'll say that that did prove that some of the current did go through the source material when you split it like that. So I think that probably was beneficial here on the brass. The solid one stuck decent and probably just coincidental, but the solid one may have been a little bit better, but we'll say that's about a tie. Now the stainless, it's going to be very hard to pull these off from my experience in the past. You're going to pretty much tear the strip. This is 0.15 strip and it's going to be pretty solid. Yep, it definitely ripped the strip, so. I really could tell a little bit of difference. I think the solid one just happened to do better on that one, but they probably really close to balancing out. So overall, I would say that's about a wash. The aluminum did prove a little better for the split. The stainless happened to do a little bit better with the solid on that one. And I'd say the brass was about a wash as well. Now the true test here, I'm going to put these two cells side by side and on the negative side where I've cleaned them up, these Samsung 21700 cells will be a good example and give us some surface here to test with. I cleaned off a lot of the conformal coating that Milwaukee puts on their batteries and I've cleaned off the spot welds that was there originally and we're going to put two spot welds on each battery like I typically would. One across these splits here trying to force more current to go through the cell case in between the two like so which is what some of the guys in the comments said that I should have been doing that video. I'm going to move this brass out of the way because I don't like my board hovering over it. Even though my board's not in a case, I do have some layers of Kapton tape. I'll show you here where it, just so it wouldn't be a problem there. It wasn't for that tape. It would have popped for sure. But I like to keep this out of the enclosure for cooling. And I also like to keep the leads as short as possible, obviously, which makes it move around a lot more on the bench. But that's just the nature of it. So now back with this solid one. I'm going to do it like I like to do and I put my leads kind of close together and try to put as much current as I can through a closer spot. So that's one reason I don't like to use the slits or slots myself in most cases because I like my welds close together and sometimes with the slit that means you're really close to the edge. So, But which one's better can we tell? Well that one ripped the tabs of the nickel strip so you can't get much better. Same here. I mean. For years, I've been doing it kind of both ways. Um, I like to put my leads closer together. It's typically what I go for. I don't know how you personally feel about it, but it's up to you, the way that you choose. But since I did have some comments about this in that last video, and I really didn't say anything about it in the video, I just kind of did it my way. But this is what I was doing, is just putting mine closer together than sometimes you can do with a gap or a slot. And I've generally had very good luck and success. And I typically use the solid strips anyway, if I'm building my own. So that's why I've kind of gotten a habit of doing it that way. Can a slot be better sometimes? Probably so. I'm not disagreeing with that at all, but just wanted to share in video. Instead of just saying, hey, I do it my way, or this is why I do it. Well, I'm just going to show the way I've done it and try to show if it's a difference and we can learn together. But on the stainless, on this one here, it just happened to be probably a little bit better on the solid strip side because I went closer together as you can see the gap in between was less because typically when you do a strip like the one on the right your gap's going to be further apart and that's just how it is by nature on the brass just trying to see here the the penetration depth here just closer together on the left with the solid strip that was just a little bit better so the strip being split didn't really help on the right because I was further apart. So if anything, the solid did a tad bit better, but nothing really worth mentioning. Before the video ends, let's do one more test of just, I guess, one spot weld each. Again, on the left with a solid strip. All the settings still the same on the spot welder. One spot weld and a clean spot. So they both just have the one spot wheel. It's pretty strong. Yep, got to wiggle it. Yep, 
I mean, I really couldn't tell a difference there. They both were very strong. Both of those stuck very well. So there you go. There's just some testing, checking to see which way does better with the strips. I think the 21700 sales are probably the best test, and I couldn't tell a difference in between them. And I will just say this. Um, a lot of spot wheels you have to do, like up here in the top right, are just straight strips anyway. A lot of times we don't have a split, you know, like the, the main battery tab, for example. Of course, it's not split. So I get used to using solid tabs a lot. So I'll be interested to hear your thoughts. Now, I do know a lot of battery strips do come with the slit. And I've been working on batteries since way back in the NICAD days for sure, like in the top right here. And they've always been split to some degree, at least almost always. So I'm sure in manufacturing they have figured out that is better. Can't argue with that. Even this pack here came with some strips, you know, aftermarket build kits. A lot of times I will actually use my own strips, but that's why I cut these the way I did. For example, I was trying to mimic the way that they uh they do some of these strips here but yeah over the years that's kind of how i found it to be i use solid strips a lot but i can see the benefit at times of going across and you can get your spot wheels closer together i hope you found the video helpful if you did please like share and subscribe i have a link down in the video description for this spot welder as well as some other tools and interesting things that i find helpful on my workbench any link you click on is an affiliate link and it helps support the channel and i greatly appreciate it thanks so much for watching and god bless